Hey, what's up guys? This is Erkin from HDD Recovery Services. Uh, today I will be recovering this Western Digital 1TB black drive using this Western Digital 500 gig drive. Why would I do such a thing, you may ask? And, uh, well, I don't have massive inventory of parts of 1TB drives that are black like that. And uh, the, the code that I use for compatibility uh, most of the time on um, uh, Western Digital drives is the one that is right here and both of these drives are C3F coded to produce a one terabyte drive does not cost more um, than to produce a, a 500 gig so for the manufacturer of hard drives it, it most of the time does not make financial sense to have two uh, products uh, being made at the factory when they can just make one and then reduce the size of the bigger one to uh, expand their uh, line of products to cater the market. What we have is a, a single disk two-headed drive that yields one terabyte. In order for the drive to be uh, to go down from uh, one terabyte to 500 one of the logical heads can be disabled and it's only going to be left with one head in the drive that's active and we're only going to have access to one of the sides of the disk and that's going to reduce the amount of space that the drive will have the size of the drive could also be reduced through uh, lba setting i don't know what the L exact lba on one terabyte is off the top of my head but that number through, even through tools like MRT or PC3000 could be reduced by whatever number you want it to be and that will reduce the size of the drive and how it comes up. That's uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why I'm using a 500 gig drive today because I tested it on my machine and it does give me an indication that there are two heads present but only one is used. I don't know how this is going to turn out because uh, sometimes what happens is and some, the reason why uh, the manufacturer may reduce the size of the drive by disabling a logical head inside is uh, because it failed uh, during the test you know uh, they could be testing the drive out for quality control and find that oh look uh, one of the heads is not working so good or it's not working at all so let's just disable it put a label of 500 gig instead of one terabyte on it and sell it like a brand new unit that works and is flawless that could be part of the reason and if that's the reason uh, then we will not have access to the entire surface of one terabyte drive because we're only going to have access to one of the heads. But uh, even one of the heads right now is better than none because this drive currently is uh, doing nothing but making clicking noises and hopefully not going to find any platter damage on the inside when it's powered on.
right, let's power it up and see if we get uh, the same clicking sounds as before. No, we don't. Up here, our radio lights are on. Channel 2 is selected. Auto detection sees that it's a marvel. We get the ID. And let's see sector access. Booyah! That's the first one. That's the last one. So this is one of the techniques that I use and uh, if you have the tools to uh, um, assess uh, what type of parts the drive is built with, uh, this technique can be implemented not only for Western Digital but for other brands and other makes of drives as well. This kind of stuff happens all the time, it just shows that uh, manufacturers will do a lot of things to cut costs and to increase uh, their uh, reach to cater pretty much everybody that they were trying to cater. Uh, so if you guys are in the same situation where your drive is now dead and is making clicking sounds, check out the description box. You'll find all our contact information there. Uh, if you like the presentation, hit like, subscribe to the channel as usual, and I'll see you guys tomorrow around the same time for the new episode. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.